welcome everybody in today's lecture i'll be focusing on connections various connections are available for joining members in case of rcc structure we connect different members by casting them in situ in general but in case of steel members different type of steel roll sections are available in the market they need to join together and that joining can be done in a various way that means various way means various connections we use like rivet connections bolt connections then uh, weld connections and combination of those uh, two or three now when two members like beam and column can be connected together or beam and beam that means main beam and secondary beam can be connected main beam and secondary beam can be connected beam and uh, column can be connected as i told column and column means from first floor to second floor second floor to third floor these columns can be connected again column and brackets can be connected column and caps can be connected base plate of trusses can be connected again truss member connecting through gusset that means when a member different members are connected at a particular point then that can be connected through gusset members so when more than two members are joining at a point we need connections now this can be connected through weld or through bolt or through rivet connections depending on the uh, requirement we choose the connections now purlins and rafters also are connected then wind braces and columns rail and columns those things can be connected further stiffeners in plate girders diaphragms in plate girders flange and wave connections in plate girders stiffener plates in column joints are also used for connecting different type of members now i told method of fabrications are basically three types one is rivet joints then bolt joints and then weld joints also we can make combine of two or three of the above means we can uh, in a particular joint we can make use of uh, rivet and bolt bolt or weld or bolt and weld uh, sorry bolt and rivet that can be made so requirement wise we have to choose now let us come to the requirement of good connection what is good connection basically good connection means it should be such that it can easily be installed inspected and maintained that is one thing then it should be such that uh, there is the least possible weakening of the parts to be joined and it should be rigid enough to avoid fluctuating stresses which may cause fatigue failures so these things has to be kept in mind now coming to rivet connections we know rivets are inserted in the uh, plates to join together different plates and by adding heat we can insert the rivet like this so this rivets can be inserted uh, a typical rivet joint is showing here uh, where different members are connected to a plate uh, by riveting and in the parts of rivets we see there is head this is this part is called head and this part is called shank now shank has particular length depending on the type of means uh, thickness of the plates shank length will be varied and different type of heads are available and according to that different name of the rivets are given now this rivet head has a particular diameter which is called rivet diameter and uh, sorry rivet head diameter and this is the rivet head height and this is called nominal diameter rivet diameter that is called that shank diameter is called nominal diameter and depending on the size of nominal diameter the strength of rivet can be calculated uh, on the basis of the type of material used and accordingly we can calculate the rivet strength now before using rivet connections we must know what are the uh, different type of advantages we can achieve through rivet connection one is the rivet can be used some of the advantages of rivet connections are cited here like one is easy of riveting process then cheaper fabrication cost low maintenance cost and rivet connection is permanent in nature that means due to vibration and other uh, problem 
and uh, unlike bolt it has it will not loosen. So, uh, it can be permanent in nature. Then rivet connection is possible without electricity in remote area unlike welded connection. In case of welded connection rivet uh, uh, means in case of welded connection we need uh, electricity otherwise it will be difficult to uh, join the members. But in case of rivet connection only applying through heat uh, through application of heat we can find out. Now, dissimilar metal can also be joined even for non metallic joint rivet joints are possible these are certain advantages, but it has lot of disadvantages also. What are the lot of disadvantages? Let us see. One is the necessity of preheating the rivet prior to driving is required. So, that is very important. Then uh, another thing is that high level of noise uh, is created. So, at the um, site where construction is going on, high level of noise can be created. So, generally we, we nowadays we try to avoid this noise then skilled work necessary for inspection of connection means connection is done completely or not that can be uh, thoroughly checked that is possible if skilled work are available. Then labor cost is high because it takes time that is why uh, riveting process is uh, costly in terms of labor cost. Then cost involved in careful inspection and removal of poorly installed rivets are also there. So, because of certain disadvantages nowadays riveting connections are becoming obsolete mainly because of noise and because of generation of heat and also uh, difficult to change the uh, uh, what you call difficult to change the improper uh, insertion of the rivet. That means, if certain rivets are improperly inserted now to change it, it takes time. So, it is costly. Now, coming to different type of rivets we can see that one is power driven rivet another is hand driven rivet there are two type of rivets. Uh, power driven rivets is called hot rivet and hand driven rivet is called cold rivet. Again in power driven rivet we have two types one is called power driven soft rivets another is called power driven field rivets. And similarly, for hand driven rivets, hand driven soft rivet and hand driven uh, field rivet are available. Now, commonly used rivets are like snap head, snap head where the head dimensions are fixed, head dimension means in terms of diameter of the shank. If diameter of shank is d, then we can consider that. Uh, that the diameter of rivet head is 1.6 d and the height of the rivet head is 0.7 d. So, with different height and diameter different type of heads are snap means uh, rivet heads are available and its name are different. I have just given here two type of rivets one is snap head another is flat head. In case of flat head the head diameter head width is 2 d and head height is 0.25 d and this is length this length is called rivet length and d is the nominal diameter of the rivet. In this case we should remember that uh, there is two type of diameter one is rivet diameter another is uh, hole diameter that means nominal diameter and gross diameter. Gross diameter is little higher than the rivet diameter that means nominal diameter it is sometimes 1.5 or 2 mm more than the uh, actual diameter that means nominal diameter. Now, while designing the rivet joints we had certain assumptions we have to make on the basis of which we can design a rivet joint. First is uh, friction between the plates are neglected when joining the rivets uh, we are neglecting friction between the plates. Then shear stress is uniform on the cross section of the rivet that means uh, over the cross section the shear stress distribution has been considered as uniform this is uniform. Then distribution of direct stress on the portion of the plates between the rivet holes is uniform that is also uniform and rivet group subjected to direct load share the equal load. 
that means if we have n number of rivet and if we have total load t then uh, each rivet is withstanding load of t by n that means equally sharing the load then bending stress in the rivet is neglected and we consider rivet fills completely the hole in which they are driven that means though rivet hole diameter and rivet diameter is slightly different that means 1.5 mm to 2 mm uh, larger uh, in case of hole diameter but while designing the rivet we assume that uh, it is completely uh, uh, completely filling the hole then bearing stress distribution is uniform and its contract uh, contact area is d into t where d is the nominal diameter and t is the thickness of the plate so bearing stress distribution when we will be calculating we will calculate the contact area as d into t now as i told that rivet connection is becoming obsolete nowadays therefore in new code in, in is 800 2007 uh, details of rivet design is not given in limited method details are not given however uh, in case of bolt and weld explicitly it has been uh, uh, described so when we will be going to bolt connections we will see the codal provisions and then as per code what are the requirements what are the type of failures of bolt are coming into picture that we will see and we will try to design the bolt accordingly so in clause 2.4 of is 800 sorry in clause 2.4 of is 800 2007 uh, it says that bolts nuts and washers shall conform as to appropriate to these codes so in these codes the bolt properties are given in these codes in these is codes bolt properties their dimensions their strength different type of strength different type of bolts these are given in these codes uh, which is mentioned in is 800 2007 in clause 2.4 now coming to bolt we see here uh, uh, number of members are joined together at a particular point and bolts are used for joining this now if we come to the um, parts of bolt we will see a bolt has a head this is called head and this is called shank this area is called shank right and this is called run out and this is called thread this is called thread and this is called nut so nuts are tightened over the plate to connect uh, different plates at a particular point then this is thread length from here to here is thread length and this is the grip length this portion is called grip length and total length is called nominal length so bolt has different parts like head nut shank thread thread length grip length and nominal length which will be required for our design when we will be going for design of different type of bolts we will see uh, these parameters are required this dimension different dimension like what is the nominal diameter of bolt what is the gross diameter or hole diameter of bolt what is the type of uh, head whether it is hexagonal or square like this we will come across now before going to use bolts we will see what are the advantages and disadvantages of bolts as i told there are three type of joints one is bolt joint one is rivet joint another is weld joint every joint has certain advantages and disadvantages so we have to look into the advantages and we have to see what are the disadvantages and for a particular case while we are going to joining certain members we have to know what type of design we are going to look for means what type of connections we are looking for means what type of connection will be useful for uh, joining those elements so first let us see what are the 
advantages of uh, bolt. One is less manpower. Unlike rivet connection, here manpower is quite less. Just you tighten the nuts and get connected. Then another advantage is high strength bolts are much stronger than rivet. So, number of bolt required will be less. In case of rivet, number of rivet required will be more and in that case, the number of holes to be created on the plates is more. As a result, the strength of the plate after insertion of hole will be quite less in case of rivet in comparison to bolt. Number of bolt if it is less means generally it comes less compared to the rivet, then what we see that number of holes required will be less and net effective area will be high as compared to rivet. That is why strength will be high as compared to rivet in case of bolt connections. Then bolting operation is very fast unlike rivet or weld bolting operation here is very fast because you just go and uh, tighten the nuts. Then bolting operation is very silent in contrast to hammering noise in rivet. In rivet in case of welding joint also noise produ is produced, but in case of bolting uh, there is no noise and this is a cold process. So, there is no risk of fire unlike riveting or welding case in case of welding also heat is generated. So, there is no risk of fire and another um, enormous advantage we can found from bolt connection is that this bolt can be removed, replaced or retightened easily in the event of faulty bolting or damaged bolts due to accident or hazards. Unlike rivet connection or weld connection, in case of bolted connection if we find that something goes wrong in the connection we can remove the bolt, we can replace the bolt or we can retighten the bolt, then we can find out the uh, means we can find out the actual strength right. Now, certainly it has certain disadvantages, uh, what are those let us see. One is architectural look, in case of of course, uh, uh, rivet connections also architectural look wise uh, it is not recommendable because it looks bulky. So, in case of architectural look we may have to think oil connection sometimes. So, there is a disadvantage in case of uh, bolt connection and bolt connections have lesser strength and bolt connections have lesser strength uh, in axial tension as the net area of the root of the threads is less because net area is becoming less. Then under vibratory load the strength is reduced if the connection get loosened. So, uh, in case of bolt connection this is a big disadvantage that is under vibratory load the not get uh, loosened and because of that the strength is going to be lost. Unfinished bolt have lesser strength because of non-uniform diameter. Okay. This is another disadvantage that in case of unfinished bolt it has lesser strength. So, uh, we need more number of bolts and more number of bolts means more number of holes and more number of hole means uh, lesser strength of the plate because of the insertion of hole. So, in tension the plate will be uh, net area of the plate will be reduced. So, strength of the plate will become less. Now, coming to types of bolt, what are the types of bolt? We can classify the bolts in different way, one is according to the material and strength. According to material and strength, we can classify this as ordinary structural bolt and high strength steel bolt, these two type we can make, but according to type of sank, according to type of sank we can make three type of bolt means you can categorize into three type of bolt, one is unfinished or black bolt, another is turn bolt 
and another is high strength friction grip bolt. This is very important. High strength friction grip bolt generally we use in case of uh, high load and if we need less number of hole, less number of bolt, then we have to go for HSFG bolt. Then according to pitch and fit of thread, we can use standard pitch bolt, fine pitch bolt and coarse pitch bolt. This three type of bolt uh, means pitch can be categorized. Then according to shape of the head and nut, we can make as square bolt or hexagonal bolt. Square bolt means its head is square and hexagonal bolt means if its head is hexagonal. This is a typical example of hexagonal bolt. If we see here, uh, we will see that it has, it has number of sides are 6 in this case. Now, before designing the bolt connections, we have to come through some terminology. So, let us see, okay, just uh, this slide I do not want to show, please remove this. So, we will go for some terminology. We need to know certain terminology before going to use uh, design procedure of bolt connection. Like in case of rivet and bolt, some terms are used like pitch distance, gauge distance, edge distance, end distance, bolt hole, gross diameter, nominal diameter. So, those things will come into picture. So, we will see what are those. Uh, if two plates are joined together, say for example, this is one plate and this is another plate are connected. Now, these are connected either by bolt or rivet. So, maybe this is connected like this, these are bolt position and we will come across that bolt positions are either regular or zigzag. According to that, we can make means we can name as zigzag bolting or plain bolting or chain bolting it is told, sometimes diamond bolting also used. So, we will come across. Now, the overlapping portion of these two plate, this distance is called lap distance. Here, if you have a force P and if we have a force P, then uh, this distance is called the overlapping distance is called lap distance. Now, pitch, what is pitch? Pitch is the center to center distance of adjacent bolt, that means center to center distance of adjacent bolt or reverse measured in the direction of stress. That means, in this direction forces are there. So, in this direction, this distance is called pitch P. Right. Similarly, the perpendicular to the direction of stress, this distance is called gauge distance, gauge. Right. Now, there is a difference between pitch and gauge. Pitch distance is distance between two consecutive uh, rivet or bolt along the direction of stress and gauge distance is gauge distance is uh, distance between center to center distance between two rivet or bolt along uh, perpendicular to the stress. Right. Now, this distance is called end distance, end, and this distance is called edge. That means, 
parallel to the direction of stress the outermost river center and the edge of the plate the distance between these two is called end distance and the perpendicular to the stress the distance if we consider this is called edge distance right now so what will be the pitch distance and edge distance so, we have to see what is the minimum pitch distance. This is expressed means discussed in clause 10.2.2 of IS 800 2007, 10.2.2. In clause 10.2.2, the minimum pitch is defined, minimum pitch that is how much? that is 2.5 d, 2.5 times nominal diameter of the rivet or bolt, 2.5 times the nominal diameter of the rivet or bolt that is the minimum pitch. Why this minimum pitch is required? Because we need sufficient space between this rivet or bolt to tighten, so that it does not overlap. Right? So, minimum pitch is required to tighten the bolts properly and to prevent the bearing failure between two bolts. If it is very closer then uh, bearing failure may occur. So, to prevent this bearing failure we need to specify a minimum pitch and code has specified this 2.5 d. Then let us come to maximum pitch what is maximum pitch and why that is necessary? Maximum pitch is desirable to place bolt sufficiently close because to reduce the length of connection and gasset plate. That means, if we have uh, different members connecting at a point as I shown, uh, if we have pitch distance more then the gasset plate will be required more. So, the amount of material for gasset will be more that we do not want. That is why we will try to make pitch distance as less as possible, but not less than minimum pitch. So, this maximum pitch that also is defined in code that is given in clause 10.2.3. In this clause the maximum pitch what should be is defined there. So, this maximum pitch is defined in code which is written that that it should be 16 T or 200 mm in tension that pitch should be 16 T or 200 mm in tension and it should be less than 12 T or 200 mm in compression. This is the pitch, this is the distance between two conjugative bolts, distance between two conjugative bolts. But distance between two adjacent bolt in this case, this is conjugative bolt, and distance between two adjacent bolt, adjacent bolt, p should be less than 32 t or 300, whichever is less, always whichever is less. So, p has to be decided in this way. So, while designing a member say in case of a lab joint, we need to provide bolts in such a way that it follows the codal provision. That means, the limit of maximum pitch and minimum pitch has to be maintained.
Next minimum edge distance, minimum edge for rivet. Now, I will come for rivet and then later I will come for bolt. This is true for bolt. So, minimum edge distance for rivet that is given 1.5 d, where d is the nominal diameter of the rivet, right. And gross diameter, as I told, rivet has nominal diameter, nominal diameter is termed as small d, and gross diameter, which is the whole diameter actually in case of rivet that is termed as capital D. And this capital D will be D plus 1.5 for D is less than 25 mm and it will be D plus 2 mm for D is greater than or equal to 25 mm. This is given in IS 800 1984 in the earlier code in clause 3.6.1.1. Remember when earlier codes was available that means 1984 which was based on working stress method at that time the code has provided the uh, gross diameter as nominal diameter plus 1.5 for nominal diameter less than 25 and if it is more than 25 mm then it is d plus 2 that means clearance has been taken as 2 mm now for bolt in case of bolt the minimum and maximum edge distance and end distance are given in clause 10.2.4.2 and 10.2.4.3. Minimum and maximum edge distance and end distance has been given clause 10.2.4.2 and 10.2.4.3. Now, what it states? Here it states that minimum edge or end distance that should be greater than 1.7 times the whole diameter d hole d h is diameter of hole 1.7 times the whole diameter and this is in case of shear or hand flame cartages this is in case of shear or hand flame cartages and it should be greater than 1.5 times the whole diameter in case of rolled machine flame cut, swan and plane ridges. So, for different cases the minimum edge distance are defined either 1.7 times the d h or 1.5 times d h and maximum edge distance, maximum edge distance is defined it should be less than 12 t into epsilon, where epsilon is 250 by f y into whole to the power half. T is thickness of the thinner part, T is thickness of the thinner part and maximum edge distance should not exceed this 12 t into epsilon and epsilon can be calculated from the steel property. Right. Now, another term which we have already used that will come into discussion that is bolt hole. Bolt hole means that is required to facilitate the insertion of bolts to make the connection between steel members and this bolt holes details are given in clause 10.2.1 table 19 the bolt hole has been given that means it depends on the diameter of the 
sunk. That means, bowl diameter the nominal diameter if this is d then if nominal diameter is 12 to 14 then standard clearance means hole will be 1 mm right all are millimeter that means bolt hole is bolt diameter plus clearance clearance of hole you can refer to the code where very meticulously this table has been uh, described means has been elaborately given. Now, for different cases this whole clearance will be different like for standard clearance it is 1 mm for oversize it is 3 mm for short slot. it is 3 mm 4 mm and for long slot it is 2.5 times d where d is the diameter of the bolt similarly in case of bolt diameter from 16 to 22 the standard clearance is 2 mm oversize is 4 mm short slot in case of that it is 6 mm and for all the cases it is 2.5 d for long slot. Then for 24 mm diameter of bolt the standard clearance is considered 2 this is 6 and for short slot it is 8 and for long slot 2.5 d and if the diameter is greater than 24 mm then it is 3 the standard clearance is considered 3 that means the whole diameter for standard case will be 24 plus 3 that means 27 similarly for oversize it will be 8 for short slot it will be 10 and for long slot it will be 2.5 d so this is how the bolt hole will be calculated. So, this details is necessary for calculating the bolt strength. While calculating the bolt strength, we will see what are the type of failure is coming into picture and for different type of failure this pitch distance, edge distance, bolt hole, bolt diameter etcetera will be required. So, before going to start those things we should be aware of this terminology. So, with this I conclude this lecture thank you.